Hey Beer Geeks, or should I say non-Beer Geeks? This is my playlist where I see if I can make up for my lack of beer knowledge with the amazing thing that is gadgets and technology. In this playlist, I'm gonna be searching out the best gadgets and the best technology that allow me to get the best beer at home and in the pub without any of the knowledge. This is Lowbrow. We're very aware on a channel that we can get too geeky. We can go too highbrow. And basically I want to cover the stuff that Johnny's too embarrassed to cover. That might be you sort of naff beer gadgets, hacks for home brewing. What I want to do here is see if technology can allow me to do some of the stuff that Johnny does, but without any of the knowledge. So guys, episode one, lowbrow. What are we going to do? Um, like many of you, in fact all of you out there, I've been sitting at home on my Todd watching Johnny make amazing homebrews. That is not bad. <laughs> Very clever, Johnny. Very clever. Occasionally getting to try them, but not really being involved in the making of them. And I thought, man, I want a piece of this pie. Is there a way that I, in my home, can get tap fresh beer without being an expert or a home brewer. Now, I'm very aware that there are, there are systems out there that I can buy uh, a sort of vessel of, of ready-made beer that's ready to go and I can just plug and play it and put it into something and it's pressurized and I can pour a perfect pint. That wasn't what I'm after for, for uh, Lowbrow's first video. What I wanna do is get a bit of the feel of brewing my own beer <laughs> with having absolutely none of the knowledge needed to brew my own beer. So uh, after a lot of investigation, I discovered this, this product called Pinter, which on paper seemed perfect because um, it allowed me to basically not know what I'm doing at all, but I could take uh, this vessel and some extract and some cleaning products and some yeast and some water, put it all together, and in a couple of weeks, I'd have a a tap fresh beer. So I reached out to them and they very, very kindly sent me one, which is here. Let me pull it up. Oh, it's quite heavy. Blimey, biggish box. Wow, that's quite a reveal. I'm gonna open it towards the camera so everyone can enjoy this as well. Look at that. This packaging, I must say, I'm a guy that sometimes designs packaging. This is beautiful, but there's, there's obviously this beautiful uh, vessel here uh, which is wonderful. I'm going to put it to the side for a second and I'm going to look what else we've got. I probably should look at the instruction manual which has got a QR code on the front. Um, where's my phone? It wants to take me to their website and uh, an instruction manual which you can see here. I don't know if you can see that guys. Okay, so before I start uh, looking at the instructions, I need to choose the beer that I would like. And I've got two beers here. One is called Stars and Stripes, and the other is called Upland Social. Not really sure what Upland Social is, but uh, Stars and Stripes is, is an American pale ale, I believe. Um, so this is the kind of thing that I would like to fool Johnny with. An American pale ale is a style that I can get a couple of different examples of and try and get him to pick this out of uh, a lineup and try and trick him. So, oh, beautiful packaging, as I've come to expect from Pinter. Um, I can see we've got our extract here, which is where all the flavor, all of the magic of beer is, is right there. Um, we've got our yeast, which brings it all to life once it's in the vessel. And uh, up here we've got our, our purifier, which I'm guessing we put in at the start before we brew anything to make sure it's nice and clean and sterile environment. I've just scanned the QR code and I'm watching an awesome little video which tells me what to do. Makes it look very simple. So first things first, slide the handle off. We're gonna lift this out. We twist this. Turn it upside down, set this to carbonated, boom. Next step, pour the entire bottle of purifier into the pinter. Fill tap water that's hot 
up to the point of the line that's inside internally here. Then we put this back on, nice and easy. And then all we do is with the sanitizer, we shake it for 10 seconds. One Mississippi, two Mississippi. Now I have to attach the brewing dock, um, which sort of goes a bit like, oh, like this. Okay, pinter is sanitized. Uh, I'm just gonna add in the last of the cold water. So we're just on the internal measure. That's all the cold water in. Now all that's left to do is add the fresh press, which is the, the extract. Uh, I'm gonna get every last bit of this extract in there. Add the brewer's yeast. That gets popped in. All that's left to do now is put this sanitized lid back on in the correct position. I reattach the dock like so. So far so good. That was way easier than any brew day I've ever done. It's not really a brew day, but it probably took me about 20 minutes uh, from start to finish there. Uh, so all I have to do now is find a, a nice place to leave my painter in this upright position, uh, undisturbed for four days, just to condition. Magic, see you in four days. Okay, so the brewing is over. Uh, it was super easy. This bad boy has just been sat in the corner of my front room for four days. Haven't had to do a thing. Uh, haven't monitored it, just left it there. It's all good. Now it's time to move it. Um, I'm gonna double check on the app, but I'm pretty sure. Yep, I just take this to the sink, disconnect this, clean this out, make sure it's nice and clean. Then attach a tap onto this and stick it in the top of my fridge for another four or five days and then it should be uh, should be good to go. Okay, so we're about a week later. The beer has been conditioning in the fridge. I've just got it out, opened up the valve on the back, made a big whooshy noise, which for some of you people might be a little bit scary, but it's nothing to worry about. Um, the beer is looking good. I haven't tried it yet. I poured a little bit of the, the wastage out just to let the lines run through. And uh, I've called Johnny up to get him over and see if I can fool him. Let's do this. So firstly, Johnny, a very warm welcome to Low Brown. Isn't it Low Broy? I, that pun doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've already told everyone what it's about, but it's basically, can I use technology to make me a beer expert? To, to cheat. Cheat the system, Johnny. To cheat. Hack okay. the world! <laughs> so, I mean, I've heard of this, but tell me more about the pinter. Yeah, so this is a pinter. So basically, I've been brewing the last week uh, in anticipation of your visit. Um, and basically, this little gizmo here will let me supposedly brew uh, a good amount of pub fresh pints. Right. So it's all done in here. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, what are these then? So, I, I assume one of these is... Well... You'd be very right to assume that, Johnny, otherwise it would be useless us being here. <laughs> so one of these in this little lineup, this triptych, is a genuine pinter pint. Yep. Well, not a pint, let's be honest. The other two are supermarket parallels. American okay. parallels. American parallels. Can I just say that I love that with Lowbrow we've gone back to the old branding and glassware as well. This I is... only had six of these. <laughs> <laughs> right, so so one of these is a pinter. Yes, mate. You want me to... I, what I want you to do is I want you to tell me, first of all, which one's your favourite. Okay. And then I want you to try and tell me which one's the pinter. So okay. basically, I want to fool you, and I want to see whether this tech can beat a commercial brewery supermarket beer. That is a tall order. It's not, it's not a lot to ask, yeah. is it? I mean, in theory, it should taste fresher. Yeah. And fresher usually means more hop character, less oxidation character, so like cardboard or yeah. um, kind of wet um, caramel, so more, wet carbon caramel thing. Where do you want to start? It's your show, so uh, I'm going to start on the left. Start from the left. So it's hazy. It's a hazy boy, isn't it? It looks like it might have had some pretty good head. Oh yeah, look at that. Interesting fragrance, don't you agree? Grey, really grainy. Yeah. And st strawberries and cream. <laughs> it's got. A, it has got a sort of ice creamy. Yeah. Yeah, like a strawberry nest to very, it. Very, very sweet. Sweet. 
There's a hint of diastole there. Yeah, it's buttery a little bit. Um, it's dry. It is dry. Very, very dry. Not very bitter. That strawberry and cream thing comes through. I think the cream was diacetyl, but yeah. I think the strawberry was from the hops, like some softer citric character. Nice, rich mouthfeel. It's pretty easy. Um, <laughs> so let's keep going. Right, this one. Less tight head, less hazy, but still a good looking beer and good neck. It's more, it's definitely more hot profiles. More on. American hot profile. Loads yeah. of, um, loads of grapefruit peel, a little bit of caramel. Yeah. Got that bitterness. Boom. Straight away. Plenty of bitterness. Nice soft caramel. Bit of lemony, grapefruity stuff on the end. Not hugely hopped. Mm. Uh, not hugely aromatic hop, but loads of kettle hops. Yes. Nice bite, nice balance. No off flavours. No off flavours, no. That's a pretty well balanced beer, that. I could drink several of those. Okay, and this one. A lot lighter than the others. Way, way lighter. What do you think that means, Johnny? You think that's a, is that a hint? Is that, is that, is that the pointer? What do you reckon? Ooh. It's fresh, isn't it? Yeah, really candied, candied lemon. Jacob's Cracker. Nice and dry. Jacob's and Cracker. And that's pretty nicely balanced as well. Almost no mold character whatsoever. No. But lemony hop, bit crackery. Good balance of sweetness and bitterness on the finish. Um, pretty nice beer. Again, agreed. Very nice beer. My favourite is definitely this one. Okay. Classic American pale ale flavours, Sierra Nevada-esque. Uh, base layer of caramel and biscuit. Lots of lovely citric qualities on top. Uh, this one, if it had a bit more body, a bit more depth to it, would be very nice. But on a hot summer's day, I'd enjoy that. Yes. This one's flawed, you know? Wait, can you guess which one you think's a pinter? This is definitely the pinter. Okay. I can confirm that is a pinter pinter. Whew. So this is lowbrow, Johnny. This We're introducing... Low <laughs> <laughs> lowbrow. This is lowbrow, Johnny. We're introducing a new rating system for gadgets here. Is that okay? Uh, sure. It's your, it's your rodeo. Okay, cool. So I, sticking to the theme of lowbrow, I am going to score the system out of crispy boys. Of course. You have to give it a score of one to five crispy boys. Okay. Five being the greatest gadget ever. Right. How many crispy boys would you give the beautiful pinter? You know, what they've pulled off here, it's a beautiful machine, and it's incredibly hard. Like, what was it? Six days from no beer to beer. To beer. Is yeah. incredible. I'm going to give it three out of five. I'm going to knock off one because of the brewing floors and one because, partly because of those brewing floors, it didn't taste fresher than the non freshes. Personally, I'd give it three and a half crispy boys out of five. <laughs> What's <laughs> half a crispy boy? It's a snit. It's a snit. <laughs> um, I, purely because it's a lot of fun. I love gadgets. It's beautifully industrial designed. Uh, the app works great. Mm -hmm. um, the kits are really fun. And I think I'd, I would genuinely be excited to try some of the other kits. So it's three and a half crispy boys for me. Guys, this has been Brad's lowbrow. It's been real. <laughs> uh, it's been different. I love gadgets still. It hasn't put me off, if anything. It's made me more excited to explore the world of beer gadgets. Oh, good. I, I can't wait to prove to you that beer cheating is better than beer geeking. That's a strong line. <laughs> <laughs>